approximate the definite integral, 0 to 1, square root of 1 plus x to the fourth, dx. We're going to do this using Maclaurin series for square root of 1 plus x. Now, no matter what we try to do with this, we're not going to be able to find a nice antiderivative in closed form. So what we're going to have to do instead is, just to get a number, is to use power series to get an approximation. Okay, so to start out, we already saw the Maclaurin series for square root of 1 plus x starts out like this. 1 plus a half x minus an eighth x squared plus a sixteenth x cubed, and so on. So if I want to switch over to x to the fourth power, wherever I see an x here, I'm going to change it to x to the fourth. So we get x to the fourth for this. x squared goes to x to the eighth. x cubed goes to x to the twelfth. Now, I want to take the antiderivative. So for a power series, the way I take the antiderivative is just going to be term by term. So what do we do? We add a constant. The 1 goes to an x. We're going to add 1 to the 4, get a 5, flip it over, gives me a tenth, and so on for the rest. Now, we'll take this to be any derivative going from, well, we make it definite going from 0 to x, and then I want to get rid of the constant of integration. So you note, if I put in 0 for x, what we're going to have is a definite integral going from 0 to 0, and that's always going to give me 0 no matter what the function is. On this side, if I put 0 in, we're just going to get c, so that means c is going to be equal to 0. Okay, so let's put in 1 for x, that's going to give us this, and then we'll notice on the other side we're just getting 1 plus a tenth times 1 to the fifth, minus a 72nd, 1 to the ninth, plus, and so on. Now, when I see what comes out of this, we're going to note it's going to be an alternating series. If you go look at part 1a, you'll see the form of radical 1 plus x. That'll alternate after some point for the 1. Taking the antiderivative before we put the 1 in is just going to preserve the alternating property when the 1 goes in afterwards. So, since I have an alternating series, we can estimate the error. We know that the error is going to be, if you take out so many terms of your alternating series, the error is going to be bounded by the next term that shows up. So if I use the first three ter terms here for my approximation, the error is going to be bounded by this term here. So what's that going to say? Well, I'm going to add these up. This is going to give us our estimate, 1.0861, repeating. The error is going to be bounded by the next term. That's going to be 0 0.0048. And we get a nice clean bound if we just change that to 0 0.005. So we're going to have, as a lower bound, our estimate minus 0 0.005. So it's going to be 1.081 repeating. And then if I add the 0 0.005 to our estimate, we get 1.0911 repeating. The actual is going to be 1.08943. And you notice our actual is going to wind up being between our bounds.